Good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It's Tuesday. It is time for our daily devotion. I want to invite you to come and join me. Let's take a moment to gather and pause and center ourselves on God's presence in our lives today. Looking forward to spending a couple of moments with you in our time of devotion. As you find us on Facebook, if you would leave a quick comment and say hello, I'd appreciate knowing that you are with us. And if you are someone who watches this at another time, don't forget to leave your comments as well. It's always nice to see who stops by and joins in with our devotion time. I get a blue reflection off my glasses, which is kind of driving me crazy looking at it. Probably driving you crazy looking at it too. Good morning, Linda. Great to see you today. I'm glad you are here. I have all my stuff out for today for the devotion time. I can't believe it's already August the 20th. Man, time is just flying by. This year is going by quick. Good morning, William. Glad you are here. Just quickly, we're going to be reading Psalm 27 today, so you might want to find your Bible or your Bible app. Let's turn to Psalm 27 together. That's where we're reading from. We're going to read the whole psalm. It's 14 verses, um, so if you want to find that. Excuse me. Psalm 27. My stronghold is the title of the psalm. It's a Davidic psalm. We'll wait a couple more moments, see if anybody else uh, pops in on our Facebook page and says hello real quick. Psalm 27. All right, well, here's our prayer. We're going to go ahead and get started. Oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. So prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. Psalm 27, again titled, My Stronghold, a Davidic Psalm. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? When evildoers came against me to devour my flesh, my foes and my enemies stumbled and fell. Though an army deploy against me, my heart is not afraid. Though war break out against me, still I am confident. I have asked one thing from the Lord. It is what I desire, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, gazing on the beauty of the Lord and seeking him in his temple. For he will conceal me in his shelter in the day of adversity. He will hide me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Then my head will be high above my enemies around me. I will offer sacrifices in his tent with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Lord, hear my voice when I call. Be gracious to me and answer me. In your behalf, my heart says, seek my face. Lord, I will seek your face. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. You do not leave me or abandon me, God of my salvation. Even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord cares for me. Because of my adversaries, show me your way, Lord, and lead me on a level path. Do not give me over to the will of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing violence. I am certain that I will see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be courageous and let your heart be strong. Wait for the Lord. Our devotion writer today is Arpan E. Jacob, and Arpan is from Uttar Pradesh in India. Focus verse is verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. 
whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Here is Arpin's devotion for today. My first posting in the church was at a rural church with almost 100 members. I was new to ministry and not yet ordained. One of the members of the church was powerful, rich, and had a strong position in the conference. He did not want his position or the way he ran the church committee to be challenged. When I felt called by God to object to his actions, he exercised his authority and power. For months, my salary was not paid. My close colleagues and friends warned me about the consequences I would face if I continued to challenge this person, and my own parents even told me to withdraw. Depressed, broken, and weary, I sought the Lord's guidance with all my heart. Within two days, I felt uplifted and more courageous. I was not ashamed or dismayed. The Lord helped me and in due time seated me before my enemies. I thank the Lord who tells us in scripture not to fear, for he is with us. Thought for the day is, is I need not fear because God is with me in every situation. Man, I wish Arpan would have told us the rest of the story, <laughs> right? I wanted to know just a little bit more. How did he handle this? It, it is fascinating. I, I have been in some church circumstances where, um, although the bishop, it, it's interesting when you are ordained, the bishop places his hands upon the, the pastor's head and the person being ordained and says, take thou thy authority, which means by the discipline, the pastor has the authority to order the worship, and the administrative life of the church. We're given that responsibility. We're given that authority. However, in our system, we know that uh, too often people get moved rather frequently and in short time. So sometimes uh, in the life of our conference, we have had, um, had appointment seasons that only lasted for people, you know, two, three, four years, and, and then they were moved on somewhere else. Um, we had a bishop at one time in Missouri who did not believe in long-tenured pastors. I tenorously nut you moved when the bishop told you, and the bishop was going to tell you to move about every two or three years. Uh, studies, though, have shown that um, the longer someone is in place, the better opportunity they have to build relationships and to build trust, and from that to set strategy and vision that will help a congregation move forward in their life together. Um, and that's why we don't move people quite as frequently and, and in short a ten tenure as we used to. I would imagine when that happened, it had created circumstances in churches' lives where uh, they felt, you know, some powerful person felt a need to bring some kind of order and stability. And because of that, people, you know, particularly if they have a strong personality or if they have wealth and, and power in that kind of way, uh, those people rise to the top and they just kind of take the reins. And when they take power, they really don't want to give power back. Uh, and it becomes a tug of war. I remember in the church that Margaret and I joined in the, in the early 90s, there was a tug of war between the pastor and a very powerful person that had sat on the administrative board for far too long. Um, so uh, those things kind of happen. And we need to be you know, we need to recognize that. But I, I think today, you know, one of the things that we need to do is is to to really think about how we use our power. And are we using our power to hold down and break people, or are we using our power uh, in a way that promotes the common good? Are we lending our power to things that are going to bring the love of God? Uh, to all people, not create factions and friction. Uh, because I think that's often where people find themselves dismayed and depressed. Uh, they lose um, confidence. They lose sight of what's important. And more importantly, they lose trust with what's going on, particularly in a community of faith that finds itself fractured in this kind of way. Uh, if there's anything that I hope to promote in my ministry is, is that we can have confidence that God is leading all of us. 
uh, and that God is capable of using whatever power each of us has for God's common good, if we'll give it to that. And that it's not about us exercising our own will or way or vision or any of those kinds of things. But rather, all of us are called to um, not give in to fear in any circumstance, but rather to, in faith, walk with God. And whatever gifts and power God has give us, given us, to give them back for God's glory and for God's purposes. So I want you to think about where you find yourself uh, at your church, your community, the place that you worship, the people that you're around, and and think about what God has gifted you for and the power that God has given you and how you might give it away in a way that promotes the common good of loving God and loving your neighbor. Let's take a moment to pause and pray. So God of all strength, you have molded and made us. We ask that you give us the spirit of courage to do your will and to walk in your ways. And we ask this in Christ Jesus. Amen. Great, friends. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Great to see all of you. By the way, good morning, Stacy. Good to see you. Hello, Carol. Good morning to you. And good morning, Marilyn. Glad you all made it as well. It's a joy to be with all of you today. As we finish our Facebook post, I want to remind you, if you would like, feel free to share this on your own Facebook page. Maybe one of your family and friends will join us in our devotion time. And again, if you're someone who watches this later on, don't forget to leave your quick comment as well. Take a moment to pause and pray for one another. I am praying for you. I hope you will take a moment to pause and pray for me as well. And then don't forget, come and join us again tomorrow. We'll be back at our regular time for devotions. Can't wait to see it and uh, can't wait to see it. But until then, may God's grace and peace cover you and be with you. Thanks for being here today, friends. See you soon.